Cosmo is a robot with a unique personality, uh, really a one-of-a-kind personality where we see him doing lots of different things and demonstrating a real feeling and connection uh, as he responds to his environment and the changes in it. When we developed Cosmo, there was no specific audience um, that we had in mind. Uh, really, our ambition was, uh, was to ask ourselves and challenge ourselves what it might be like if we were to bring the type of star that you see in a, in a movie to life. Uh, on how that would feel uh, if he was here with you in the real world. Now we found, having done that and having achieved that with Cosmo, that there's two really distinct audiences that are falling in love with him. Uh, one is a, a younger audience, uh, a six to ten year old kid's audience, and, uh, and the other are um, parents. Uh, and what we found is that the parents are really falling in love uh, with Cosmo as well, partly because of the way in which kids are interacting with him, um, but also just because they genuinely enjoy spending time with Cosmo as well. I mean, I think there's a sense of wonder, uh, which exists for kids as well, but a very different sense of wonder that, that parents have. Uh, and seeing their kids interact with technology uh, in a way that has previously always been quite one-dimensional, um, with very little feedback. Whereas Cosmo very, uh, very much feels very present in the room with you, uh, and is very much about uh, developing a relationship with you. In San Francisco, where our head office is, we have an animation studio which borrows the same techniques and much of the same software that they use uh, to create feature films. With the animation team that we've brought in who had worked previously at places like Pixar and DreamWorks, the characters that appeared in those movies uh, do share some similarities with the way in which Cosmos come to life, not least of which, you know, the way in which his, his eyes tell such a strong story. We as a company went through many different iterations of what those eyes might look like. And actually what we discovered is that uh, the simpler that we kept those eyes, the better. Uh, and they're incredibly expressive. It's actually amazing what you can achieve uh, just by um, enlarging or shrinking down one or both eyes to form a different reaction. So it's the eyes very much that, that draw you in, but it's actually the rest of the behavior uh, around Cosmo and how he animates as a robot, which brings that whole package to life. Because of course, if he was just stationary and his eyes were moving, you would only get a sense of half of that emotion. Uh, the expressions of, uh, of his voice very much add to that uh, feeling of him being very present in the room with you as well. One of the things that, that Cosmo offers is the ability for people to learn how to code uh, via something we refer to as Code Lab. And it's a very, very simple way for people to interact with uh, Cosmo, to drag and drop, to program him in a very simple way so that they can see uh, Cosmo come to life per their instructions. Marketing for uh, Cosmo has been a really exciting uh, kind of a challenge for us actually because it, we have not taken the approach that maybe other tech retailers or other tech manufacturers might have done with a, a product because really we've kind of uh, boiled it down to two things what is the uniqueness of, of Cosmo and who is the audience um, that we want to uh, and, and will want to engage with him the most and really what's very unique about Cosmo is that he's his own personality uh, and so really we've taken the principles and we've looked back at the way in which uh, other um, I'll find other examples in popular culture where we've seen characters come to life uh, and, and really come into our, our homes and really looked at what we can take that's best from those and applying them then of course to the audience and who the audience is. So really our campaign has been very simple, let's provide a platform for Cosmo to shine. So in some respects it appears quite, uh, quite simple and quite traditional because we put him in a broadcast environment because having come from the big screen or at least his uh, inspiration being drawn from the big screen, it naturally makes sense to put him back on the big screen as well. So both TV and cinema play a really important role as he begins to entertain you. Uh, but then we're also, of course, looking at the, uh, the opportunities that digital marketing presents for itself to actually give you almost a little slice of what Cosmo can do rather than the bigger picture. I mean, what we're finding through looking at uh, sort of gameplay and how audiences are interacting with him is that as Cosmo is ultimately becoming a robotic pet in people's homes. Uh, which is really exciting because what it means is that they're uh, uh, ensuring that Cosmo is pretty much always on in the home, that he's interacting with them uh, and that he's uh, certainly kind of entertaining them in much the way that um, a cat or a dog might have done traditionally at home. I think for, for us when we had brought Cosmo to market we were very excited about the opportunity of people engaging with him regularly and frequently and it's really exciting to see that sort of gameplay uh, starting to roll out. <laughs>